This video is sponsored by Squarespace. So, you want to build yourself a gaming PC right now? Well, clearly, a lot has changed in the last few months. We've had new releases from Nvidia, AMD, Intel, and a lot more stuff is actually coming on the horizon. But the question is, if you're looking to build a gaming PC right now, then what are the best components, and ultimately, what should you be buying? In this video, we're going to be choosing PC parts for three different price points. We've got our budget build, mid-range, and then, of course, the RTX 4090 Beast. These are all builds that have been heavily inspired by the ones that I've actually built in real life, just over there. And if you do want to check out the RTX 4090 build that we did last week, you can find that video in the top right corner of your screen. The performance is pretty insane. Let's kick off with our budget gaming PC build. And as always, I would advise choosing a graphics card first. So let's have a look what we could get. What have AMD got? Well, there is the 6500 XT, but this was... Um pretty universally reviewed as not great. And I didn't like the fact that it didn't actually have a baked in encoder. You can step up to the 6600, but then this is still almost 300 pounds. That is a lot of money for a GPU. So let's have a look over at eBay and actually see what we can get on the used market. What about an RTX 2060? That's actually not too bad. Yeah, 200 pounds. 160 pounds, brand new apparently. So yeah, you're basically looking between 160 and 200 pounds, depending on how good an offer you can find. The 2060 was a brilliant GPU, and I think for most people, it still is gonna suffice for high-end 1080p gaming and even a fair bit of 1440p. Obviously, it is gonna depend on what you want to play, but if you can pick up a used one of these, I think it's gonna serve you very, very well. So let's add in our RTX 2060 for around about 180 pounds. Ish. Then of course we're going to need to choose ourselves a CPU or a processor and I'd pretty much always go for Intel at the budget end at the moment. They seem to just have a better offering especially when you take motherboards into consideration. I mean this is very cheap, £190 for an i3 and a motherboard but it's a little bit too cheap if you ask me. If you can stretch to it then I think the i5-12400F is pretty much going to be the de facto choice for all budget gaming PC builds but you can't get away from the fact that this is still £200. So I think looking at something like the i3-12100F, using this for maybe six months to a year and then upgrading to an i5, maybe even a 13th gen, is probably what I'd recommend if you're really looking to cut as many corners as you can. Yes, this is only a four-core processor, which in 2022 isn't particularly future-proof, but in terms of value, I don't really think it can be beaten. Just have a look at the benchmarks that we did in an earlier video to see that the performance is actually a lot better than you'd expect from what is an i3 processor. So we'll add this to our list for 123 pounds. Next up, we're going to need to grab ourselves a chassis and there are loads of good budget options so you're not gonna be limited to just one. We'll have a look at micro ATX cases. Fractal Pop Mini, 90 pounds, way too expensive for what we're going for. And it is definitely surprising just how cheap you can get a full chassis for. I mean, there's this one from Aerocall, 32.99. Screams a little bit too cheap if you ask me. What about this one here from Cougar? I think this is Micro ATX, which means it's slightly smaller, so you can save money on your motherboard. I quite like the look of this, actually. I think we're going to use this. Then we can press on to the motherboard. And of course, we will need a Micro ATX one, so let's filter by those. We'll go for B660, because we need to support the latest 12th generation processors. That's a force of habit. They're no longer the latest. They're the one back in the range. So we've got the 13th gen coming, but the i3, I'm sure, won't be here till 2023. So you probably don't want to wait. Well, they only have one Micro ATX B660 board on eBuyer, which is a bit naff. Really? Only one? We'll have to take our shopping elsewhere then. And look, they've actually got the CPU for less as well. Who would have thought it? Shopping around, you can get lower prices. But back to motherboards. Micro ATX B660. We have some offers, look. Prime, Asus, not bad, £130. This is a good offer though, and in my experience, Prime boards have always been very good and reliable for the money. So I think we're gonna use this one. £140 for the Asus Prime B660M. It is definitely worth noting though that this motherboard does not support Wi-Fi, so you'd need to buy a more expensive board or get an adapter if this is something you actually needed to run on your desk setup. Personally, I'd go for a more expensive motherboard though, because it'll give you other features, but each to their own. Next up is memory, or RAM, and this is DDR4, because this is a DDR4 motherboard, not the more expensive DDR5 that you find on the newer Ryzen's or on certain DDR5 Intel motherboards. 
we're going to be looking at 16 gigabytes of the stuff. This is a good offer here, 60 pounds for some Fury Beast, or even less, let's some Patriot Viper Steel. And there's not actually that much more for the 3600 megahertz kit, so I think we're going to go for this, 56.99. For our storage, it should actually be pretty easy because we're looking for a PCI Generation 3 drive, 500 gig, decent speeds, but nothing that breaks the bank. So we'll filter it appropriately, and there is this SN350 green look. $36.99. This is definitely worth considering, but for me, when you can spend just a little bit more and get much faster speeds, I would probably spend the extra six, seven pounds. I mean, look, Crucial P3, $42.99, longer warranty, faster speeds. Makes sense to go for that, if you ask me. And out of habit, I was about to start doing some shopping for our CPU cooler, but of course this is a budget-friendly build, and guess what you get inside the box with the i3? A budget cooler for free and i would strongly advise they do upgrade this over time but when you're buying it in the first instance don't bother just use the free one because it is a relatively easy upgrade to do later and if you're spending an extra 35 pounds now then that's 35 pounds you have to take away for something else not worth it and then we move on to our final components which is of course the power supply we really don't need anything too crazy whatsoever around about 550 watts should be fine there's this one here from cougar look 42.99 rated bronze 600 watts it's going to allow for some upgradability let's go for this one support for multi gpu technology 600 watts i think that's going back a bit cougar but we'll add that to our basket for 43 pounds it seems quite a lot of things for 40 two or 43 today. We can then bring up our magic calculator. One plus two plus three equals. Here we go, we've added in all of the numbers. 608 pounds, which actually really isn't too bad for a budget gaming PC build. Obviously, yes, you do have a used GPU in there, but the RTX 2060, as I've said earlier, is a fantastic GPU, even supports a little bit of ray tracing, but realistically, you're probably not gonna turn that on. It's gonna be perfect for everyone until you're ready to upgrade to something else. I think this is actually the first build that we've done in about a year and a half where the budget build actually has a graphics card in. Like, well done prices. Oh, the irony. I've just realized my calculator joke actually added three pounds, so it's 605 pounds. What am I like? Once again, let's start with our graphics card and we'll compare NVIDIA and AMD. 3060 Ti, today only deal 430 pounds. At least that's close to RRP, but I thought GPU was meant to be coming down loads. Maybe you want to buy used again. Okay, and what about AMD then? Probably looking at around about a 6650 XT. You can get one here for £395. We need to do a little bit of quick research. Fortunately, there's a guy called PC Centric that's actually benchmarked these cards so we can get a direct comparison. There's my face going, no. So the 6700 XT, there it is. 91, 95, 53, 25, because no DLSS. But then the 6700 XT does come out ahead in terms of Horizon Zero Dawn. You can see what I was talking about in the review. I mean, I think it's a bit of a no-brainer, especially with DLSS and a cheaper price. We should go for the 3060 Ti. So £430, let's add this to our basket. As this is all about price to performance, let's look at the mid-range. So we go for B550, and there's currently loads of motherboards here for about 150 quid, which is pretty good. But then crucially, what about the CPUs? Oh yes, look! The Ryzen 5 5600X, they're just trying to get rid of them now. 170 quid! But we're gonna add this one to our basket. And then look, they've got the Strix for 160 quid. No, no. Cancel that, I've changed my mind. They've got the tough with Wi-Fi for 150. That's more my style. Just remember that if you do go for this, you might need to update the BIOS, but you can use BIOS flashback. You just need a USB drive. You don't need to worry about having an older gen CPU. All good. I mean, if you don't know what this means or maybe this scares you, I've actually made a video all about it. Top round corner of your screen. Next up, we can find ourselves a chassis. Always worth having a look at the offers. H510 flow, very good case, 90 pounds. You've also got Antec's DF600 flux. Is that mesh on the front? Mm, no, not really, that puts me off. Let's go with the H10 flow in black, 90 pounds. This time we will be buying ourselves a CPU cooler. You could go for an all-in-one liquid, but you're gonna be spending a fair bit of money. Personally, I think around about 40 quid or so for the 5600X on an air design is probably what I'd personally recommend. In terms of outright performance, this Deepcool AK400 comes with two 120s, so that's probably gonna be best for noise levels and acoustics. As it is only a six core chip, I think we can go with the A35 though, so this should do a decent enough job, and when you're gaming, it's the graphics card that's gonna make more noise anyway. 
Next up, it's memory, and this is gonna be very similar to last time. I just wanna make sure it looks a bit better with some RGB flare, but also 16 gigabytes of the stuff at 3600 megahertz. It looks as if it's all about 76 pounds or so. If there is a Ryzen optimized one, I'll probably wanna go for that. Corsair's Vengeance Pro though is stuff we use time and time again. This particular kit is actually Ryzen optimized, 75 pounds 50. I think this is a bit of a no-brainer. Let's move across now to storage, and we will go for a high capacity, faster speeds, PCI generation four. So let's filter it to one terabyte. A 980 Pro for 118 quid's not bad. That's pretty tasty, actually. Let's go for this. Comes with a heatsink that you're not going to use. And then of course, last but certainly not least, we have our power supply. And I'm going to want to go for maybe 650 this time. If you are going to want to upgrade to maybe like a 4070, 4080, it might be worth looking at 750 to give yourself a bit more headroom, but depends how much money you're trying to save. Look at that. NZXT, C750, 60 quid. Hybrid modular as well. I'm sold already. But this is absolutely a steal. Let's go for this. And because everything is from Scan, we should have our full price list ready to go. Definitely a fair step up. It's almost double the money, but it's £1,146, including delivery. So I think for a gaming PC that's going to last you a very long time, that is absolutely not bad. I think the main limitations really are that it's not going to have too much RGB. You have to add extra case fans to the flow. And of course, the only upgrades you'll be able to make to your processor are the Ryzen 7 and the Ryzen 9 from the 5000 series. So you will be able to get extra performance and more cores. But in terms of outright gaming performance with something like a RTX 4080, that's where you might start to get a little bit CPU limited and there won't be anything you can do about it. But for probably nine out of 10 people that are never going to upgrade to one of those anyway, this system is pretty damn cool. Next, system. And in the interest of fairness, we're gonna use Overclockers UK this time, and we're gonna start with the big one, the RTX 4090. Are oh, they yeah, a lot more? Yes, classic. But it does appear that at the moment, our best bet is one of these for 2,000 pounds. 2,000 pounds! It's meant to be about 1,700. In terms of the CPU, I'm actually gonna be a little bit surprising here and recommend the i7 over the i9, because it is gonna save you a fair bit of money and it's probably not gonna make any noticeable difference to the frame rate, but we will pick ourselves a decent motherboard for it. Strix is 480. Oh, look at that, we go for the Strix white for 400. Oh, that's quite nice, actually. Let's do that. We then pick up our 13700K, but I don't think anyone really needs the integrated graphics, so we'll save a bit of money and get the KF. We will of course be needing a case, and overclockers actually give you this 40 series compatible cases thing, which is quite nice. But I think for me, there's only one real true out there case at the moment, and I've actually done an RTX 4090 build on it. Find that video in the top right corner of your screen, but it is of course the Lee and Lee O11D Evo this time in white. In terms of memory, you might be surprised to learn that we are also going for DDR4, mainly because it's gonna save you money, and I'm still not convinced that DDR5 is actually worth it for gaming yet, but this is something we'll be testing, so get subscribed if you're not already so you don't miss that. But of course, we're looking for a white kit here to properly match our theme. Do they actually have anything? They don't actually have that many kits on overclockers. Back to scan, 32 gigabytes, ProSL white, 3600 megahertz, 120 quid. Steel. Then we need our storage. We go for a single two terabyte drive. This looks like a good option. SN770. Personally, I'd rather go for a higher capacity at this price than either pay more or pay the same amount of money for faster storage at one terabyte. Not really worth it. So we'll add this. We'll then move on to some fans. The SL120s are very good. Triple pack is 75 quid. So we'll add a pack of these along with another one for the rear. It seems as if Scanner has actually read my mind though as they're recommending this lovely Corsair white cooler. Oh actually no, what am I talking about? I'm being silly. Why would we use the Corsair cooler when we can use the Lee and Lee one? 170 pounds, look, it's cheaper. Let's go with that. And then for our last final, probably actually the most important thing at the moment, the power supply, we're looking at 1000 watts. And as you can see, they do definitely get quite expensive, especially 1000 watt power supplies. But fortunately, right at the bottom, there does seem to be a decent value one. 150 pounds from Corsair, RM1000X. Let's add this to our basket. And then here comes the crazy bit, the price. I did say this was gonna be the big boy 4090 BC. I wasn't lying. Are you ready for this? Bearing in mind, we still need to add 119 pounds to our total for the RAM we got from Scan, it's a lot. It's currently 3,956 pounds, 66. And we're adding 119, so that would be 
4,163 pounds, 66. Editor Cole, can you put me out of my misery, please? I mean, don't, you know, just the caption will suffice for now. And this is obviously the problem with going with an RTX 4090. It's just crazy money, it's silly, no one really needs it. I mean, nobody does need it. That mid-range PC, especially in multiplayer titles like Apex, even at 1440p, is gonna do most people fine. I don't think you'd be able to notice a massive difference between the two when it comes to outright gameplay, but obviously those are the options. I would absolutely love to hear your thoughts on this. What PC has taken your fancy? Do you think that I've chosen appropriately? Or do you think I've been a bit of a numpty and missed something? Links to absolutely everything are linked down below, alongside the RTX 4090 PC parts that we actually made not that long ago, or at least the link to the video. But thank you so much for watching. I'll leave you with one more thing before we go. A quick word from this video's sponsor. Like and subscribe. Choosing PC parts definitely can seem quite daunting. And you know what? Building your own website definitely can seem it too. But fortunately, there's a service out there that makes your life so much easier, Squarespace. Connect with your audience and generate revenue through gated members-only content. Manage your members, send email communications and leverage audience insights, all on one easy-to-use platform. You can also create a community on your Squarespace website with a fully integrated commenting system and powerful blogging tools to categorize, share, and schedule your posts. You can now even use third-party tools thanks to Squarespace extensions, which help you to manage inventory, promote products, streamline bookkeeping, and even display social media posts automatically. Go to squarespace.com for a free trial, and then when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash PC-centric to save 10% off your first purchase or a website or a domain. Thank you, Squarespace, for sponsoring today's video.